Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a quick look at one of the most important financial ratios that are used to assess the financial performance of a business. It's called the return on capital employed. Now, of course, don't forget that in business, the main return from business activities is profit. Profit being the difference between total revenues and total costs. But in order to earn a profit, most businesses have to invest. Invest in the business. Invest, for example, in inventories, uh, stocks, warehouses, and maybe production facilities and capacity if they're involved in manufacturing. Of course, other businesses, maybe not involved in manufacturing, also or still need to invest in distribution capabilities, for example, if they're a retailer. So the key point about return on capital employed is that it's a useful way of measuring the relative return, i.e. profit, on the amount that is invested, i.e. the capital invested in the business. So return on capital employed is sometimes shortened to ROCE, ROCA, is a key, a key ratio. Let's have a look at it in more detail and also have a think about why it's so useful. Firstly, of course, it's widely used because it's a measure of relative profitability. It gives you an indication as to how effectively a business is turning its capital invested into profit. It can also provide a very useful benchmark or target rate of return for individual projects within a business. So when you come to look at investment appraisal and you see the kind of returns that are being made, the target rate of return may well be a target return on capital employed. And uh, return on capital employed is also very useful as a means of benchmarking the financial performance of a business with close competitors or with the industry as a whole to see whether that business is operating efficiently or has uh, higher or lower profitability compared with the competition. So a really useful ratio. How do you calculate it? Well, it's a return and it's expressed as a percentage. And uh, strictly the calculation, it's, it's calculated in different ways, but strictly the calculation is this. You take the operating profit of the business, uh, more commonly the operating profit, occasionally you may be asked to use net profit, and you divide the operating profit of the business by the capital employed in the business, which is defined as being the total equity in the business, which we'll see in a second, plus the non-current liabilities. And both of those numbers on the bottom half of that calculation are drawn from the balance sheet of the business. And of course, operating profits you'll find in the income statements or otherwise known as the profit and loss account. Because it's a percentage, of course, once we've done that little division there, we have to times it by 100 to express return on capital employed as a percentage number. Now, let's have a little look at an example. And on the screen, what I've done is I've listed out some of the summary information that you need to calculate return on capital employed. And I've done it for two uh, sample or imaginary businesses, Company X and Company Y. Let's just briefly look at this information. A Company X, just working down the, the column there, has non-current liabilities of £500,000. And on the equity side, uh, it has share capital of a million pounds and reserves, retained profits of 250,000 pounds. So that makes total equity, total equity is share capital plus reserves, total equity of 1.25 million. The operating profit business, which is drawn from the income statement, the operating profit is 400,000 pounds from the latest year. And you can see there's some different information for company Y. It has a higher total equity as a result of a, uh, a high level of reserves, one and a half million, and share capital of a million, making total equity of two and a half million. And it also has higher non-current liabilities. It's usually debt of some sort of £700,000. So some slightly different information. Now, if you want to have a go at calculating a return on capital employed before you have a look at uh, the solution here, uh, why not just pause this uh, video, have a go, and then when you're ready, start the video again. So let's have a look at the return on capital employed calculation. We said that it was operating profit divided by the total of total equity plus non-current liabilities. So in the case of company X, operating profit of £400,000, and we're going to divide that by adding together total equity of 1.25 million and 
non-current liabilities of £500,000. So 400 divided by 1.75 million. Company Y, a slightly different figure there. They have a higher rate or higher level of operating profits, but they also have higher capital employed. Uh, two and a half million of equity plus 700,000 of non-current liabilities. So you'd calculate 600 divided by, in that case, two, uh, 3.2 million. And if you do the numbers and, and times it by 100, you can see that the return on capital employed of company X is 22.8%. And that is actually higher than the return on capital employed of company Y, which comes in at 18.7%. Now, that's interesting because the operating profit of the business of company Y is much higher than company X. So how come it has a lower return on capital employed? Well, the answer is because it has a lot more capital employed in the business. So whilst its profit is higher in absolute terms, its absolute rate of return, its sorry, relative rate of return, rocker, is lower because it has so much more on the bottom half of that calculation. It has more capital employed and therefore a lower return on capital employed. So hopefully you can see from that how return on capital employed is calculated. Now, a few words just about how you would evaluate or how you could use this, this useful financial measure. Firstly, to say it is very widely used. And the beauty of it is because it uses published financial information from the income statement and the balance sheet, it's relatively easy to, to calculate automatically from that information and to compare that information between competitors and between industries. So hence, uh, financial analysts uh, use return on capital employed quite widely. But it's important to remember, of course, that the, the, the percentage will definitely vary between industries. Some industries have relatively low levels of profit and high levels of capital invested, which would make the return on capital employed relatively low. Whereas others, for example, the service sector has relatively little capital intensity, but can have quite high profits. And therefore, you'll find when you compare service sector businesses with, for example, manufacturing businesses, the service sector usually has a higher level of return on capital employed. And of course, the other thing to remember is it's just based on a snapshot of financial information. So the bottom half of the calculation takes the latest balance sheet data when it works out to equity and non-current liabilities. But of course, that's just a snapshot of the position of a business at a particular time. Where return on capital employed comes in really useful is to see, in the case of an individual business, how it's changing over time. For example, it might be slowly rising, which would be good news, which would suggest a more a profitable use of the capital invested in the business. And of course, it's really useful for comparing the relative financial performances of close competitors. There we go. That's a brief introduction to an important financial ratio called return on capital employed.